Hey guys, um, so this time around we are doing uh, cell parts. So like I told you guys earlier in the year, you should have learned this stuff in seventh grade if you went to middle school in Texas, but if not, um, hopefully you've learned it before. Okay, so here we go. All right guys, so important cell scientists. Okay, there are five of them. They're all listed on your test. Remember, if it's red, copy it word for word. If it's black, you don't have to do anything with it. Okay, so for this guy, this first one, Robert Hooke, he saw the first cells, and he saw those in cork. Yeah, like a cork board. Okay, that's what he was looking at. So those were dead. All right, so he didn't really get a whole lot out of it, but he did see them. Um, so he was the guy that named them. Okay, then we've got Lewin Hooke. He was the first to observe living cells. Okay, first to observe living cells for that guy. Next, we've got Schleiden. Uh, this guy figured out that all plants are made of cells. Okay, then you've got Schwann, who figured out all animals are made of cells. The way that I remember that one is that a swan is an animal, um, and he his name is Schwann. So this is a dumb memory trick that I use. Um, and then the last guy is Virchow, and he figured out that cells don't just pop up out of nowhere. Okay, that they come from something that's already existing. So for Virchow, I would write all cells come from already existing cells. Now, cell theory combines three of those guys. Okay, um, cell theory is basically just kind of the theory about all of the cells together. So three components of it. The first one, everything that's living is made out of cells. Okay, so if it's dead, it's not made out of cells anymore but maybe it was before. But all living things are made of cells. Two, cells are the basic unit of life. Okay, so it's pretty much the smallest living unit. Um, and number three, all cells come from already existing cells. Okay, so that was Virchow word for word. Okay, there are two types of cells. One of them is called a prokaryotic cell, and the other one is called a eukaryotic cell. Okay, now, the word pro, the word part of it, literally means no, okay? And then you means true. So the way that I remember that, pro equals no. So a prokaryote is going to have no nucleus, and it's probably not going to have very many organelles. Now, off in your margin, I want you to write down the word organelle, okay? Because I know most of you probably don't know what that means. Okay, and I'll be saying it millions of times. So an organelle, okay, is the, stay with me here, organs of a cell. Okay, so you have organs in your body, right? Your heart pumps blood. Okay, well, cells have organelles, which are a lot like those organs. Uh, so those are a lot like those organs, okay? Um, so you have a brain that tells your body what to do. A cell has a nucleus which tells it what to do. Okay, so again, going back to it, prokaryotes don't have one of those um, nuclei and they also don't have the majority of those organelles. Now a eukaryote, which is what we are, has a nucleus in every single cell of its body and it also has organelles. So a couple of key things you need to make sure you've written down there. Pro equals no and U equals true. So that's right here. And then also the prokaryotes, there's no nucleus and not many organelles. And the eukaryotes have a nucleus and organelles. All right, now we're going to talk about each of those organelles. So what you should have done, okay, in your journal, because based on your note guide, you should have 16 squares. Each of them should have a label. Okay, and then we're going to do a few things in each of those squares. So we're going to talk about 16 things. It's going to be really quick, so stay with me. Okay, the first thing I'm going to tell you, these do not go in order. So you're going to have to make sure you find where they belong. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is the cytoplasm. All you have to write there is goo that holds organelles in place. So I'm going to highlight that red for you. Okay, goo, and it keeps organelles in place. No picture, literally just those words. 
Another thing you need to write down, this is in plant and animal cells. Okay, you can abbreviate, abbreviate that P and A if you want to, but it's in plant and animals. Next is the cytoskeleton. That has three jobs, shape, structure, movement. Shape, structure, movement. Okay, that's also in plant and animal cells. All right, next we've got the big daddy of them all, the nucleus. Okay, that is the brain, the control center. Okay, um, and that is where DNA is. Okay, so DNA is in the nucleus. Now that is going to be in a plant and an animal as well. Next is the nucleolus. Notice it's a little bit different. It sits inside the nucleus. Okay, inside the nucleus. And then you also need to know that it makes ribosomes. Okay, that's its job is to make ribosomes. Now, do me a favor, draw yourself a circle, okay, full circle, and then draw a small darker circle inside of that. That's the nucleolus. It's going to be the dark dot in the middle of the nucleus, also in plants and animals. Then we've got the rough endoplasmic reticulum. I'm just going to call it the rough ER. Uh, the reason that it's rough is because it has ribosomes. Now we'll talk about ribosomes here in just a second. Okay, but it has ribosomes. And what the rough ER does is makes proteins. Okay, very important that you're writing these jobs down. Makes proteins. All right, next we've got the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, don't get it confused. The smooth one has no ribosomes. Okay, and what this one does, it makes carbs, lipids, and it helps clean or detox your body. So your liver has a whole lot of these guys. Okay, because it's basically just cleaning stuff out. One thing I forgot to tell you, both the smooth and rough ER are in plant and animal cells. Alright, now I'm a big fan of the ribosome. They're small and they're mighty. Okay, they play a big job even though they don't look like anything at all. Uh, so what they do, they hook up amino acids. And if you remember, a chain of amino acids makes a, hope you said protein. Okay, now ribosomes again are made in the nucleolus. That's also important that you write down. And then you can have two versions. Some that get attached to the ER. Remember, that's going to make it the rough ER. And then others that just float. So right down there for that one, for that bullet, you have attached ribosomes and free-floating ones. And these are in plant and animals. Okay, now the Golgi may be called the Golgi apparatus, or it may be called the Golgi body. Either way, same thing. Uh, its job is to package and transport proteins and lipids around the cell. I kind of think of it like UPS. Okay, it's moving stuff in, in and out and sending it where it needs to go. Okay, next is a vesicle. Really all that does is transport. Okay, so it is a small fluid filled sac. And then I want you to write in red for transport. Okay, that's going to move stuff in and out and around the cell. Golgi and vesicles in plants and animal cells. All right. And the mitochondria is my favorite organelle. Okay, we're going to call him the powerhouse. Okay, the reason we call the mitochondria the powerhouse is because it makes ATP, which is energy. Okay, so it makes ATP for energy. Now, our muscles have a lot of this. Okay, they have a lot of mitochondria because they need lots and lots of energy to keep us going. Okay, you also need to write down that this is involved in cellular respiration. So helping us break down stuff and also helping us breathe. Also in both plant and animals. Okay, next we've got the vacuole. Um, vacuoles are only in plants. And what they're good for is storing water. Now all of you have probably seen a uh, healthy plant in your life and a dead plant. The central vacuole is what makes the plant stand up. If there is no water in the central vacuole, it's going to wilt and die. All right, next we've got the lysosome. And basically this has enzymes in it. Okay, the lysosome is, has enzymes that are going to break down food for the cell. And also um, 
those enzymes will break down any dead cells or worn out cells that are kind of floating around um, in the body. Now, lysosomes are mostly in animals. I'm not going to say they're not in plants. I just want you to know they're mostly in animals. Uh, next, we've got a centriole. Now, a centriole is a protein that is special. And what it does is pulls apart, remember, apart anaphase, uh, animal cells in mitosis. I actually think they look kind of like a star, um, almost like the Star of David, um, if you know anything about uh, Jewish religion or Jewish, Jewish faith. Um, they kind of look like the Star of David. So if you see anything in a test, it's like, hey, what is this star-looking thing? That's going to be the centriole. All right, next is our friend the cell wall. Obviously, this is only going to be in plants because we are not the teacher from Jimmy Neutron um, who ate that seed and then turned into a plant. Anyway, the cell wall is for protection and stability. It's this big, thick line in this picture right here. Uh, but yeah, obviously, again, not animals. Again, we're not the teacher from Jimmy Neutron, so we are not going to have a chloroplast, and we're an animal, so again, only in plants. And what happens here is photosynthesis. I also want you to know that the chloroplast contains chlorophyll. Okay. Then we've got the granddaddy of them all, the cell membrane. Now, it's also called the plasma membrane. So somewhere... Up above where it says cell membrane, I also want you to write plasma membrane because you may see it called that. Now draw your balloons again because you're going to see those balloons over and over again. Now, you need to know that this is made of lipids. Remember, that's a fat, so made of lipids. Okay, and it has carbs and proteins stuck in it. It is selectively permeable and it basically what selectively permeable means because I should have really explained that it controls what moves in and out of the cell okay and we call that um, again selectively permeable so basically it lets some stuff in and doesn't let other stuff in and also pretty much just write down this whole sentence Responsible for homeostasis by controlling the movement of material in and out of the cell. So that whole statement right there will fit in that box. Make sure you write that down. All right, again, obviously save this one to last because it's the most important. It's in plant and animal cells. I know this video seems like it's too long. It'll be the longest one I ever make, I promise. But it's a lot of material. Anyway, we covered cell parts. Peace.